Hey everybody, my name is Troy Ozuna and I'm a documentary filmmaker who just went to a war zone for the very first time in his life and I have a few lessons that I think you might find valuable. This documentary is actually the reason why I was dark on this channel for so long and I've got a huge surprise at the end of the video so please stick around till then. Including a special teaser of the film. So lesson number one is that you kind of pick your level of danger. It was a pretty crazy experience crossing the border to Ukraine, uh, just feeling that sense of mortality, not knowing what was coming. There were many times that I was just sitting on the bus or laying uh, in the bed at my hostel in Lviv, in the westernmost part of the country, where I was like, what am I doing here? What did I get myself into? Um, but it was surprising at how much that faded with each passing day. When I say that you can pick your level of danger, it's the fact that if you're in Lviv, your chance of getting hit by a missile strike, which is basically the only way you can die, is honestly very, very low. I was more afraid of the crazy drivers on those streets than any Russian missile. Now, as I traveled further and further east in Ukraine, there was an interesting experience where one day I was mortally terrified of entering the frontline city of Kharkiv, and the next day, it was just normal. Hearing distant artillery blasts every five to 10 minutes went from being terrifying to just being another part of daily life. That's one of the biggest surprises of Ukraine was just how adaptable humans are. And it makes sense to me now why there are so many babushkas staying where their village is being bombarded by artillery like hundreds of times a day. It's because humans get used to it, for better or worse. This does create an interesting paradox though, where you're scared for your life, but you see other people going to the front and are being offered to get that close. And you want to do the same, but you're also afraid of dying. So it creates this, uh, Difficult dilemma. It also really made me reflect on my own privilege being in this country because while I had the choice to get as close or as far away from the bulk of the danger as possible, Ukrainian soldiers who are being drafted, who I became friends with, don't. Lesson number two is that Ukrainians are some of the most kind, loyal, and generous people in the entire world. And the best story about working with Ukrainians is the local fixer, translator, and eventually co-director of the documentary, Nadia. She was willing to assist me without any guarantee of pay for the entire time that I was there. And she would basically run herself ragged just trying to keep up with all the different humanitarian projects and my own documentary project. And that's one thing that I would absolutely focus on even more, creating a documentary in another country, is making sure that I've got a really solid, knowledgeable, dedicated, and passionate local fixer. I met a war journalist in Oklahoma one time, and he told me that some of his friends who trusted the wrong fixer in places like Iran uh, were actually killed because their fixer didn't know basically the local way of the land and local politics. So if you're going to another country, find yourself a good fixer. All of my expectations, every single one, were totally shattered. From the people, what was happening on the streets, my experience of fear and war, um, even some of like my delusions of bravery were completely, completely destroyed. It was strange seeing people sip coffee and laugh and eat at restaurants while there are missile sirens going off and their friends and family dying on the eastern front lines. This was really easy to criticize and I saw a lot of foreigners who came to Ukraine to help talking about this. Ironically, over coffee and food at restaurants. But the thing I realize is that everybody is doing everything that they can. And most of the frontline soldiers say, hey, like we, we want there to be a normal society in cities like Kyiv and Lviv. We want to be able to get coffee. We want to be able to go dancing or something when we're off duty. And my perspective of a country at war was, was really different because of the media, video games, movies, like you get to Ukraine and you expect it to be just like mass mobilization of troops everywhere and everyone focused and at attention. And it just wasn't that way. There was extreme poverty in even places in Western Ukraine, especially where they were sending the refugees while people are driving around in Bentleys and Teslas. And it made me realize just how complicated this conflict and this world's relationship to it is.
I sort of saw all the issues and beauty and ugliness of our human world encapsulated in Ukraine and magnified there. So those are the lessons that I learned during my first time ever filming in a war zone. Now for the surprise. The documentary isn't actually finished. While I was there, we discovered such an incredible story of Ukrainians' self-organized movement. Eco-anarchists and actors and authors, grandmas and grandpas, saving cats under bombings, creating humanitarian aid networks and supply chains, basically filling in all the holes and the gaps that were left when a lot of the Ukrainian government fled or was so disorganized during the first days of the war. I'm putting together a crowdfunding campaign to finish this documentary, applying for grants to be able to cover all of the gear and operating costs, and doing everything I absolutely can to make sure this film premieres at every major film festival around the world. I have never believed in a project like this before in my entire life, and it's what six years on this channel has been leading me to do. I want you to be part of this team by clicking the crowd fund link below and showing anybody you possibly can the trailer to the documentary because if we're able to find supporters to help us finish and create the biggest impact with this film as possible I know we can change the world